Hi, I am Candice Freer from Cornell Cooperative Extension of Rensselaer County, and I am the 4-H team leader. Before we get started, I'd like to just do some housekeeping. Please be sure to use the chat anytime to ask questions. We intend this to be useful, informal, informal and informative. Cornell Cooperative Extension of Rensselaer County serves the residents of our county, providing research-based education within four major program areas, agriculture, horticulture, 4-H youth development, and family consumer science. Additionally, Cornell Cooperative Extension is part of the state and national land-grant university system and serves as the local community outreach for Cornell University. Cornell Cooperative Extension of Rensselaer County puts knowledge to work in pursuit of economic vita vitality, ecological sustainability, and social well-being. We bring local experience and research-based solutions together, helping Rensselaer County families and communities thrive in our rapidly changing world. Tonight, we're going to do gifts from the home, and in my portion, we're going to use button-up shirts to make pillowcases. And these are two images I just grabbed from the web. The link is below if you're interested in seeing that. Step one, you're going to iron your shirt that you've chosen. And honestly, the uglier shirts make the best pillowcases. But this is also a chance for you to use a shirt if you want to make a memory pillow. Um, it's a great way to display something that maybe a loved one wore all the time um, in your home without it just being a shirt that you stick in the closet. You can also use a button up sweater if your sewing machine is able to sew through that thicker th fabric. So first you're going to iron it and then button it and then pin the shirt front and back to each other to keep it from moving when you're cutting. You're going to cut the shirt based on whatever pillow insert you have adding two inches to both the width and the length. After you cut it out, you're going to flip the shirt inside out and repin the fabric so the shirt's finished sides face each other. We're going to sew the pieces together using a 3 8 inch of a seam, snip at the corners just to ease turning. So you can see in my picture all the way to the left I have my sewing machine set to a straight stitch. The picture on the right hand side shows you basically a 3 a seam is the end, edge of your presser foot if your needle is in the center alignment position. And you can see my fabrics here aren't exactly lined up, um, but I pinned them the way that I want them. So one fabric was a little bit longer than the other. So I'm ignoring that and actually going with the fabric on top if you can see that in the picture and aligning that with the 3 8 seam. After you sew all the way around all four sides of your pillowcase, you're going to trim your corners off. And that's when you turn it inside or right side out. Um, you won't get bunchiness in the corners. Um, after you sew all the way around, you're going to flip the shirt right side out and you can re-sew a seam around again to give it a more finished look. I used a small 3 8 seam allowance again, but you can make it a little larger if you have room to still fit it inside your pillow that you chose. I also used a small seam because I did not want it to get in the way of my pocket. So some of your shirts that you might be using, you might have been able to cut it in a way that you're not using the pocket or you can leave the pocket on there, however you decide to do it. And after that, you're going to insert your pillow and rebutton and fluff. Some resources that might be available or helpful, excuse me, um, are on our ccerensselier.org website um, under our 4-H forms page. This um, page will give you some helpful sewing handouts, how to thread a needle, how to sew on a button in case one falls off in the process, um, sewing machine practice sheets. If this is your first go around using the sewing machine, this is a really good project because it is a simple straight stitch all the way around twice, and that is it. And then also we have some 4-H, um, a sewing project activity guide. 
and it helps you get to know your sewing machine as well as a few other ideas that you can um, do. And now I am going to pass the baton on to Eileen who is going to show you a few more gifts from the home. Hi everyone, my name is Eileen DePaula. I am the 4-H program coordinator for Cornell Co-op Extension of Rensselaer County. And today we have a really fun project that is using upcycled t-shirts to make a tote bag. So if you have an old t-shirt that you're really fond of, but maybe it's a little worn, this will give it a new purpose. And this is something that we can reuse um, or you can give it as a gift, whichever you'd like. So the first thing we need to do is gather our supplies. We need an old t-shirt, some scissors, a ruler and a pen or marker or another writing instrument so that we can draw some marks on our t-shirt. To begin with, you will cut the sleeves and the neck off the t-shirt. Make sure that you cut away from the seam so it's not left there. And then you're going to turn the bag inside out and measure it. So I like to use a ruler and um, a book is also something good or whatever else you think you might be carrying in it. That'll give you an idea of how deep you want to make the bag. So you'll take your ruler and just draw along the straight line and measure so that you know how far to cut the strips up from the bottom. Now this bag ha or this t-shirt, I've already cut the strips in and I've got them fanned out a little bit so you can see them. The strip should be about three quarters to one inch wide. Uh, the thinner strips actually, if you're doing this with your children, are a little bit easier for them to tie. So, but it's up to you if, if you wanna make the strips a little bit wider, it'll just make it a little bulkier on the bottom, but that's fine too. Um, as long as they're, when we get to the knotting part, as long as they're knotted tightly, it doesn't matter. It'll still work. So now we're going to knot our strips together so you're going to take the first pair of slits and tie them into a knot and then go to the next one and the next one and the next one. Eventually what you're going to do is take a strand from the middle knot and you're going to take, tie it to the strip on the left and then you're going to take a strip of it and tie it to the strip on the, the knot on the right. And you're just going to go all the way down until you've got a nice um, knot at bottom of your bag. You'll have, depending on how long your strips are, you might have like a little bit of a fringe there, but that's okay because we're going to turn it inside out. So when your knots are all nice and done, and again, this is something great for kids to do, so you can have a lot of fun doing this. Um, you're going to turn the bag right side out again, and you've got a finished upcycled t-shirt tote bag. These are, I've, in my examples, we've got different size bags. Um, and these are all bags that have really nice 4-H messages, so they're obviously very important to me. And these, again, are great bags. You can give them as gifts or you can keep it for yourself. What is really nice about these is you can wash them, so you can reuse them over and over and over again. And then if you've got a bag that, you know, as a 4-H educator, I always have t-shirts from different events. They have different meanings to me, so it's really nice to have them to use over and over and over again. And today we are going to make some upcycled t-shirt coasters. This is a great way to reuse any of those old t-shirts that you still have. You're not quite ready to give up yet, but they're not really not, they're pretty worn and they're not good for wearing. So to start with, we are going to gather up our supplies. We need some old t-shirts, some masking tape, scissors, and some glue. The first thing we need to do is cut the t-shirts into strips. Now this is a no-sew project, so it is appropriate for any ages, but obviously for younger children, they should be supervised uh, with the scissors. So, and also you do not want to use any of the um, seam part of the um, t-shirt. So you can see in the picture on the left, there's, I've got maybe one more strip after I've cut this one and then I'll be up to the seam. So we will not be using that part. So when you have all your strips together, you just gather them up. And now we're going to take three of the fabric strips and we'll knot them together. The knot in this picture, just the way it was taken, it looks like it's really big and it's not. Um, you want to you know, make it fairly small because you definitely want to work around it. So then you'll tape that knot, um, those strips down to the table and just start grading. And this is a great project, again, for youth. This will be a great way for them to build up some manual dexterity in their fingers and have some fun. Now, if you're thinking about maybe making these coasters as a gift for somebody, you can color coordinate if they have a favorite color. 
Uh, you can do them in one solid color, or in this case, this was an old tie-dye t-shirt that was green and white, so those are our 4-H colors, so that was that's going to be really special to me. So again, anybody can do this, just take your time knotting uh, or braiding. If you can make the braids as tight as possible, that is helpful and you know encourage the kids to do it that way um, but let them have fun this is a again and you know what's really nice about braiding if it's not exactly the way you want it you can start all over again and that's okay so this is our finished braid and you can see at the top and the left um, which would have been the bottom um, I also put another small knot there now comes the fun part when we're going to finish them off so again, if you're using like a, a super glue or something that's a little more powerful, you definitely want adults supervising. If not, you can use any of the craft or fabric glues. They work just as well. So you want to start by putting on one of the knots uh, some glue, and then you're going to roll that. Um, just And you're just going to keep um, circling around. And you want to put some glue about maybe every one and a half to two inches and just be careful uh, you know make sure it is sticking and if you have to go back and add a little bit more that's fine too so you're just going to keep going um, until you have a nice round coaster and again there's no it's no so so it's appropriate for any age and your kids can have a lot of fun doing it and when you're done you'll have some really cool coasters and you can make these different sizes um, I actually have some bigger ones that I have some planner underneath some planners at home uh, like I said, you can color coordinate. If somebody has a favorite color, you can do their favorite colors. Um, just have some fun with it.